So we're going to uh, do a little rocket stove experimentation, learn how to make a, a quick rocket cook stove. Uh, Chad made this one, this was his first rocket stove he made. Uh, he used a mixture of perlite and cement, which uh, works okay, but the cement will uh, fatigue and turn into dust when it gets high temperature. So we found that the using like clay or something else is actually um, he made it really tall because we were emphasizing the vertical riser concept, right? And so that's good. It's really tall, but maybe a little too tall for cooking on, right? Because cooking, there's no pressure, right? Unless your pan is like sitting on it. So it allows for a lot of ventilation uh, anyhow, regardless of how tall it is. Um, so this might be a little unwieldy, especially because it's kind of stable um, and then this one this one's a pretty cool because you know it's not very many cans and it was really easy to make and I actually when I first started getting into rocket stoves this is kind of like the ones I'd make they still have the shelf in there and um, you can almost do this like while you're backpacking you know you, if you bring a couple of the right size cans with you, right, you open your big can of beans, you have beans the first night, right, your beans and whatever uh, your other little can is, you know, and, and then you can use the lids to make the shelf, so with just two cans, and the next morning you can make your breakfast on a rocket stove rather than a fire. You know, the, the different concepts that are going on in a rocket stove, right, is you have an uh, insulated firebox. So even like a wood stove doesn't really have an insulated firebox, right? Depending, some have more heat bricks, more fire bricks, and those kind of help with insulation a little bit, but really they don't have that much insulation. So all the heat's being radiated out in the room, which is the point in that case, right? You want to radiate that heat out. But what, it, what the insulation provides for is reflecting that heat back into it, having a more complete burn so there's no smoke out the top. And you're burning, that smoke is wasted wood, right? And the other kind of idea is this elbow. And right now we're only talking about these horizontal feeders. But there's other styles like the maple sap evaporator too, but over there. So the shelf becomes critical because you want that airflow to go underneath the fuel and then wrap up. And you want the shelf to be, you know, just inside of the of the vertical section. You know, if it's too far in, you're blocking it. And if it's way into the back into here it's you know you're not it's trying to curl up and hit this it wants to curl up and hit in the middle of your um, the vertical riser um, so once you get it going you can put in relatively large logs but this is only going to fit one of these and one one won't burn that well so you need at least two or three to have it burning good so we want a, a little bit larger diameter this size is the size I'll, I'll start to use for, for a pretty nice um, pretty nice one see plenty of room Right, plenty of room to fit your shelf in and have enough room to put sticks in. You know, so there's this balance between efficiency and usefulness of the fire and then you know, ease of use. So you gotta kind of play with that. Ideally you want the, the inside dimensions to be roughly the same, right? But we've I've gotten away with all kinds of strange combinations, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> So, so this, I think this would be a good, pretty good deal there. And we could do the same kind of one on this one, and it would probably work. Or, like, right, so he's thinking maybe this one could be the internal dynamic. So that's be less insulation. Right, it'd be less insulation, and that's a really big fire chamber. So that one you'll find will smoke a lot more. So now we're going to uh, burn off the, off the chemicals and the, the coating they put on these cans. Where is the, uh, the main fire right? Because we don't want the, the off gas while we're uh, cooking on it. No. Is, that, is that right there? So we'll no. off gas it now so we don't have to breathe it. We don't okay. want to let it go too long and it will start Where's fatiguing the, our cans and shortening their lifespan. You're pretty much going to fill up like most of that bin. Or probably made too much. So we're mixing up the, the clay and perlite and we're trying to get to the right consistency where where we can make a, we're getting closer here. It's a pretty
pretty dry mix, but we want to make something we can make a ball, and then if we go like that, it just kind of falls apart. So we're getting close. We can add just a little more perlite. So now we're going to load the rocket stove with our perlite and clay insulation mix. We're going to load it in, and then we're going to tamp it down with the uh, with a little tamper. Trying to compress it so it's really tight, and this keeps it, um, you know, keeps it in form so it doesn't fall apart. I'll, show, I'll introduce you to how the rocket stove is applied to a shelter as a thermal mass heat. This is the same concept as the little cook stoves we made earlier. And you can feel it's probably already... No, not quite yet. But it's a little... We'll start getting warm yeah. immediately. Yeah. We could make one with a shelf in the same way and stick wood in this way, but you're going to have to always be. And it's not too bad when you're cooking, but when you want to just hang out, you don't want to be every 33 seconds throwing stuff in. But you, you just kind of toss wood in there and then it, it drops down and, and kind of cooks itself. And you can hear it says it starts to pick up, um, you know, pick up more heat. It starts to go faster, the draw. So inside that we have a very large, very tall heat riser that goes all the way from this floor down there to around here, right? So inside of this can is that insulated heat riser. The, the fire hits the top of this on the inside and then it's forced back down all the way to the bottom of this can. Um, we're at the very, at uh, this back side there's a hole cut in this can where a stove pipe sticks into it, uh, right on the back there. And then that has an elbow or two elbows that come around and go underneath this. It goes underneath this, back this way, and then out the structure. 